What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, and today I am back with another video with this time once again, we're looking at ESPN and some of their top tier analysts and debunk their biggest takes. And in today's video, we're looking at the GOAT debate involving LeBron James, Kareem, as well as Michael Jordan. And it is pretty simple for this video, we're looking at two former NBA players, debunk their takes, dissect their arguments, and use facts to beat them at their own game. So with that being said, let's get into the video. So the first take we have up comes from one of the best point guards of all time, that being Isaiah Thomas. And as you guys know Isaiah, he's always objective, always insightful, and always fair to one Michael Jordan. And in this clip from ESPN, Isaiah makes his case why LeBron James, at the end of the day, be the GOAT and the best player in NBA history. And when I say he's the GOAT, Here's what I mean, right? When you when you talk about he and Kareem in terms of their 20 year dominance over a sport, and then both of them being able to touch every single aspect of the statistical categories and be leaders in that category. You can't you can't be considered the GOAT and you don't lead in no statistical category. So stopping the clip right there, Isaiah Thomas. He makes some pretty good points. LeBron James objectively has great longevity and at age 37 has been playing phenomenally. Now where he loses me is when at the end of that clip he clearly says you have to be the all time leader in some category to be the quote unquote greatest player of all time. That criteria right there it's very odd very specific and for Isaiah he's never used that before. And to point out how bad that criteria is and how misleading it can be let's do a quick comparison of two players who are Hall of Fame point guards. On your left, you have one player who, when it comes to total stats, leads in points, assists, steals, field goals made, as well as three pointers made. On your right, that point guard only leads in one category. Objectively speaking, only looking at longevity, the player on your left will be considered the better overall player. Now, during the reveal, that player is John Stockton compared to Magic. Now, for one second, who is the better player, Magic or Stockton? It's pretty obvious Magic, he's the best point guard of all time in virtually every fan's mind. And also one thing to point out very quickly, John Stockton is the NBA's all-time leader in assists as well as steals. Magic Johnson is not. Once again, for Isaiah's criteria, Magic Johnson wouldn't be the GOAT point guard, it would be John Stockton. And doing one more player comparison to show why longevity can be flawed, Let's look at two Hall of Fame power forwards and compare to longevity. On your left, one player leads in points, assists, steals, three goals made, as well as free throws made. On your right, that power forward only leads in one category. Revealing these two players, you have Karl Malone as well as Tim Duncan. Once again, looking at both these players, only at longevity, Karl Malone is better than Tim Duncan. And when it comes to power forwards in NBA history, Karl Malone far and away has the most points ever scored. Once again, using Isaiah's logic, Karl Malone is better than Tim Duncan, the greatest power forward in NBA history. When you talk about Kareem and you talk about LeBron James, that is the conversation in terms of, in my opinion, who's the best to ever do it. Because from a winning percentage standpoint, from a statistical standpoint, from an impact on a game standpoint, any criteria of measurement that you want to use, these two are in the top five in almost every single category. So stopping the clip right there, Isaiah Thomas, his main point is that LeBron James and Kareem, in every category, they're basically top five. And once again, what he loves is total stats as well as longevity. Looking at LeBron right now, he's third in points, 7th in assists, 11th in steals, 45th in boards, and 100th in blocks. Undoubtedly, a great all-time resume. But for those categories, he's top 5 in only one. For comparison's sake, let's look at Michael Jordan and his all-time ranks. Jordan is 3rd in steals, 5th in points, 47th in assists, 125th in blocks, and 143rd in rebounds. But unlike LeBron James, Michael Jordan is top 5 in 2 all time categories. Am I saying Jordan has better longevity? Definitely not. 
But looking at both those players, LeBron James only top 5 in one category compared to Jordan, who's top 5 in two. Which once again shows, that label being top 5, it's no real criteria, it's subjective, and it makes no real sense in the overall GOAT debate. Now once again, talking about longevity, in my personal view, it's not how you gauge how good a player was at the best in their NBA careers. What I do, I look at their peak as well as their overall prime. And for Michael Jordan, I would say that's from 86 to 93. Looking at his playoff stats, they're simply phenomenal. Averaging 34.9 points a game, 6.7 boards, 6.6 assists, 2.3 steals, 1.0 blocks, on impressive 50-36 and 84 splits. Looking at that right there, that's how you gauge how good a player was at their best. Not longevity for total stats. And I won't go too in depth with it, but looking at Jordan's accolades, he won three championships, three MVPs, three Finals MVPs, the seven-time scoring champion, six-time All-Defensive, and three-time steals leader. And when it came to total stat playoff ranks as an all-around player, he was first in points, first in steals, fourth in assists, ninth in blocks, and tenth in rebounds. Okay, I will ask you this question. Do you have LeBron over Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Not until he passes him in the scoring title, but as an all-around player, yes. And by the time that LeBron okay. James is finished, see, we're measuring LeBron James now, mm -hmm. and he's still in his basketball playing career. Mm -hmm. but, we mm -hmm. can, but we can safely right. say that by the time he's done playing, he may have passed Kareem. Mm -hmm. When he passes Kareem in scoring, you have to anoint okay. him as the GOAT. So stopping the clip right there, once again Isaiah Thomas is obsessed with total stats as well as longevity. And once again for the overall GOAT argument, there's many facets involved. How good were you in your peak, at your prime, your accolades, your championships, your hardware, all that takes into account not just longevity. Because I will say LeBron James has the best longevity in NBA history. And him passing Kareem and scoring, it will be amazing and an all-time great feat. But when it comes to the overall GOAT debate, he still has work to do when it comes to catching Michael Jordan. And for a quick comparison, let's use LeBron's former teammate, that being Dwayne Wade. In D. Wade's career, he's a one-time Finals MVP, a one-time scoring champ, three-time All-Defensive, and a three-time NBA champion. In my view, D. Wade, Ed Worth is top 25 all-time and a surefire Hall of Famer. Now right here, you have the gap in accolades and accomplishments between Jordan and LeBron James. One MVP, one defensive player of the year, two Finals MVPs, three all-defensive teams, two championships, and nine scoring titles. That right there is the gap between Jordan and LeBron James. Now for the nail in the coffin and the final bullet point, once again, let's use Dwayne Wade compared to Larry Bird, a top 10 player in NBA history. Looking at these two players, Dwayne Wade has more points, more assists, more steals, as well as more blocks. But once again, at the end of the day, who's the better and overall greater player? That would obviously be Larry Bird, even despite his poor longevity when compared to D. Wade. Now looking past Isaiah Thomas next up, we have Kendrick Perkins, one of the smartest, most intelligent NBA minds. Yes, I agree, Molly. And guess what? I have another old school legend that played in the 80s and 90s that also <laughs> agree. That sent me a text. That sent me a text while me and Mr. Stephen A. were going at it. And I'm going to read it to you. Jordan won in the 90s, not in the 80s. Really quick interjection. That point right there makes absolutely no sense, especially when juxtaposed to LeBron James. Yes, Jordan in the 80s, he didn't win a championship, and it wasn't until 91 that he got his first ring. But that exact same argument he made against LeBron James, who won zero championships in the 2000s and didn't win until 2012. Also, when looking at Jordan, it's undeniable, he stopped more great players from winning championships. Charles Barkley, John Stockton, Karl Malone, Reggie, Dominique, Ewing, Matumbo, even Penny Hardaway, all have zero championships because of Michael Jordan. LeBron played against better athletes and more skilled players. Oakley and Mason would not be in today's NBA. 
So stopping the clip right there, I absolutely love this argument, saying that Jordan in his era, the players weren't as good, they weren't as skilled, and athletically, they simply weren't up to par. But just looking at the players in Jordan's era, there were definitely some freak athletes. You had Shaq, Chris Webber, Grant Hill, Penny Hardaway, Dominique, Barkley, Jordan, Pippen, Rodman, David Robinson, Karl Malone, Ty Drexler, Kevin Johnson. I mean, you can look at endless NBA superstars from the 90s who are great athletically. What I would argue is the average NBA player, the guy off the bench, is more athletic compared to the 1990s. But overall, looking at the superstars, there's very little, if any, gap in athletic ability. And in regards to the more skilled players argument, you can definitely make that case. But the one thing I always reference is a clip from Kobe back in the 2010 Finals. His overall point back then, that him as a player, he was blessed to look back on other eras. He could reference the 90s, the 80s, as well as the 70s. Players 20 years before Kobe didn't have that knowledge, that training, but they laid the foundation for what he would be as an overall player. And even 40 years later, he watched Oscar, Jerry West, he watched Bill Russell. He was a student of the game and watched all their film to build his own game in his era. All the rule changes were made because Jordan was crying. Bird, Magic, Kareem, and myself won when it was physical. Jordan did not. As you can tell Perkins, he's looking at his phone and looking at text from Isaiah Thomas, who he's reciting. The one thing I find pretty funny is that Jordan's Bulls, they won in 91, and the Pistons won in 90. The NBA in a 12-month period didn't have some big drastic changes that completely changed the era in that short amount of time. I would argue the modern NBA in the 2000s, that's where the biggest changes came to the overall rules. As in 01, they added the 3-second rule, and 04, eliminated hand checking. Then he went on to say, Oakley was not an enforcer, if memory serves me correct. He was traded to New York for Cartwright, who was more physical than Oakley. Last point, Jordan was guarded by a 6'3 Joe Dumars and a 6'2 Hornacek. And I'm going to leave it at that. Now, once again, for NBA fans, we're all taught respect all eras. But of course, Porkins in that clip tries to downplay Jordan's competition and the players that guarded him. Now, of course, if you know NBA history and Jordan's eras, the defense was great in the 80s as well as the 90s. You had Michael Cooper, Mo Cheeks, Dennis Johnson, Rodman guarded him, Dumars guarded him, Alvin Robertson, Derek Harper, Sidney Moncrief, The Glove, Mookie Blaylock, even Nate McMillan. In addition to that, the 90s were stacked at the center position in the big man spot. When you went in the paint, it was loaded and there were no easy buckets. You had Matumbo, Mourning, Mark Eaton, Buck Williams, Hakeem, David Robinson, countless centers who are athletic and great defensive players. Yeah. When it comes to top 25 greatest players of all time, LeBron James played against more than Michael Jordan. He played a lot. He played against talent? guys like Kobe. He, yeah, talent-wise. Tim okay. Duncan, right. Right. Kevin Garnett, Dirk Nowinski. Like, the list goes on, Stephen A. So that is Perkins' last overall point, which once again makes zero sense. As in Jordan's career, he beat more 60-win teams, more 55-win teams, as well as more 50-win teams. And I would argue his eras had more players who were top 25 all time. You had Magic, Bird, Kareem, Mikhail, Isaiah, Barkley, Malone, Shaq, Hakeem, even David Robinson. You could even say Clyde Drexler, John Stockton, Maybe Gary Payton. I mean, at the worst, they're top 50, but once again, they're some all-time great players. And funny enough, Perkins in that clip, he references Kobe, Dirk, Tim Duncan, as well as Kevin Garnett. When it comes to LeBron's overall record in the playoffs versus those players, he's 4-5, and five, below 500. He never played Kobe, he lost to Dirk once, lost to Duncan twice, and Garnett also twice. And once again, in LeBron's era, he stopped very few of any players from winning championships. Giannis got a ring, Kawhi has rings, KD has rings, Steph has rings, Duncan got rings, Wade got rings, Dirk got a ring, Kobe won, Paul
Paul Pierce and KG won. I mean, looking at LeBron's career and his overall era, players in his era definitely won championships and they got theirs on his watch. So that right there is the end of the video. That was the final conclusion to exposing ESPN and their bad Michael Jordan and GOAT debate takes. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.